Hey, everybody. Trina here. Thank you for uh, joining in. And I just want to say off the bat that we have about 20 minutes for this conversation because both Trisha and I have um, things that we have to be to very soon. So I want to welcome Trisha Nelson. Um, hey, Trisha, say hi. Howdy. Great to be here. Um, I actually had Trisha on my podcast um, when I was still doing the podcast. Um, I put it on hold for a little while, but um, you did. It was Heal Your Hunger. Let me give you guys just a quick background. But today I really want to talk to, I wanted to bring her back on for you guys because I want you to understand the mindset of what's in our near future, which is the holiday season. Kids are going back to school, time flies, and if we don't start preparing ourselves mentally for things right now, that's when the bottom falls out. And that's why I really wanted Trisha to come on and talk about emotions, what that has to do with you and your eating habits and how emotional eating, you might not be able to stop your emotions and the stress of whatever's happening in your life, but she can help us with the eating part of it. Right, Trisha? Amen. Well, we start with the emotional part of it, of it actually, because the eating's like the caboose on the train. We got to start with the other cars ahead of it. Ah, yes. I know. You know what? I'm always a backwards girl. <laughs> I reverse engineer everything. <laughs> but Trisha and I have been friends for a while. So um, I, I just love Trisha. And let me give you guys a quick little um, background on her. She lost 50 pounds by identifying and healing the underlying causes of her emotional eating. She spent nearly 30 years researching the hidden causes of addictive personality. I'm one of those people, man. I have addictive personality like you wouldn't believe. Um, Trisha is an emotional eating expert and author of the number one best-selling book, Heal Your Hunger, Seven Simple Steps to End Emotional Eating Now. She is also the host of the popular podcast, The Heal Your Hunger Show, a highly regarded speaker and coach, and she has been featured on NBC, CBS, KTLA, Fox, and Discovery Health. So, Trisha, thank you. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Yes. So, let me ask you um, a couple questions. Dive in a little bit about what emotional like the whole journey of emotional eating. Totally. You know, I didn't think I was an emotional eater for a long time, Trina. I, you know, I thought I just liked food. And when I first heard the term emotional eating, and this was like, God, in the 80s, I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I just like food. But, you know, once the seed is planted, I started to be aware of the fact that my eating was not normal. Like, I'd go out to lunch with friends, and they'd have a sandwich with some fries, and they'd eat their sandwich and, like, pick up their fries. I'd eat my fries and pick up my sandwich, and I'd be like, you know, why am I different this way? Like, and how could anybody in the planet leave a French fry on their plate anyway? Like just it confounded me. So I'm like, there's something a little bit different about me. And I'd have like heart palpitations when I was, you know, getting ready to go out to dinner. I was like so excited about the, the salad bar, the blue cheese dressing, the potato, the baked potato with the sour cream and chives. So I was like a foodie, you know? Um, I but- can see it. What's so funny <laughs> is when I see your face right now and you're talking about it, um, you are like <laughs> glowing and reliving that experience. I was so into That's it. That's what food and emotion do to us. You can actually see the change in your personality when you start Completely. talking about stuff like that. Completely. So like so into food. And you know, that's not bad to be a foodie, but it you have to look at the consequences. And this is where the emotional eating really comes at play and even food addiction. And to me, I was really a food addict. And it's really a spectrum. And, and people can actually take a quiz on my website to find out, you know, where they are. But it, you, I believe we're all hardwired to have an emotional experience with food. So we'll subsist as, a, you know, as a species. But for me, it was a very exciting experience. And the problem is I was also, you know, physically, you know, more apt to gain weight. So I had a propensity for slow metabolism and, and weight gain. And so I did. And by age 20, I was 50 pounds overweight. And I wasn't just overweight. I hated being overweight. Some people don't mind. It was like an angst producing experience for me. So I was constantly obsessed with my weight, how to lose weight. I tried diets and pills and potions and like therapy and 12 step programs. I tried everything and nothing worked for any length of time for me. And that's when I came to this place of despair and thinking, what am I going to do? Like nothing works and I can't control my weight. Like 
uh, it, it wasn't happening no matter what. You know, I'd lost weight from time to time, but I always had like five like different sizes of pants in my closet because I didn't know what size I was ever going to be because I was really a yo-yoer. So, you know, people might not relate to being an emotional eater because they might say, oh, but I don't binge. Well, not everybody does binge. And, you know, everybody tells me they're eating stories because I'm an emotional eating expert. And so some people are like, I don't binge, but they're obese. And my experience is, Usually, if somebody does chronically struggle with food and weight, they are an emotional eater. They're just not aware of that connection, and hopefully this will help make somebody aware of that. But you don't have to be a binger. It might just be that you're drawn, you know, the foods you're drawn to are di dictated by the emotions as well. So if we choose, you know, potatoes over broccoli, or we prefer a banana over, you know, an apple or, or you know, whatever, it's like, the starkier the food, the more dense in calories, you know, the, the bigger carb hit, that has a lot to do with the fact that we're trying to really anesthetize emotions. And so it's really something to look out for. And I say the three primary drivers, the three primary emotions that drive emotional eating, um, the best way for people to kind of start tuning into this is I call it the PEP formula. And the P stands for painkiller. So we use food as a form of painkiller. So after, you know, a breakup or after uh, maybe a job, you know, a rocky day at the, at the job or a boss that yells at you or, you know, whatever, you know, you get a bill that you weren't expecting, that kind of emotional upset can drive us to overeat, you know, console ourselves with food as a painkiller. So that's the first P. The E in the pet formula stands for escape. And oftentimes we want to just get away from it all. And this is because we have free floating anxiety and fear. And I find emotional eaters do have a lot of, you know, nervousness and, and anxious tension. And food is like, you know, I don't know if you're old enough to know this, but there's used to be a commercial that said it was like this bubble bath Calgon. So it's like Calgon. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, I remember that. <laughs> so that's kind of what we do, right? So that's what we do with food. It's like carbs and sugar, take me away, you know, and we don't want to feel that fear and anxiety and we need to settle our minds down. And the third thing in the pet formula is punishment. And people don't think of this because food seems like a treat, right? Like it's a reward. But the problem is after we get going and we don't stop, so we're going to have a little bit of ice cream and then we have some more ice cream and then we have some cereal, then we have some Doritos because you got to have some salty with the sweet and it get, turns into this nightmare. That is not a treat. And that's really a form of punishment. We can't, you know, we can't fit in our jeans the next day. We've got zits on our face. We cancel the, the social activities with friends. You know, that is some severe like punishment of ourselves. And it's like, why would we do that? And that's because of guilt. We have subconscious guilt. Emotional eaters are so prone to feeling guilty and taking on like the shame of the world, right? And so I just say, I just bring this to people's awareness that pain, fear, and guilt are the driving emotions to start looking out for it. And hopefully that's helpful to people. I think that's really helpful. And bringing awareness um, to this topic, I, you know, because I'll anybody can be an emotional eater. Like it, you don't have to be overweight. You can be um, like, I know that when I'm bored or stressed, the chips, like, and I eat healthy chips, but no chips are really, when you get down to it, are healthy. <laughs> if you eat a whole bag, especially. <laughs> right. They taste so good. Like, and, and it's a brain trick. Like your brain is like, it's all those endorphins and things. And it's something to make you feel good because something else is happening. That's making you feel anxious, nervous, whatever. So what about like with, we know, you know, with the holidays coming up with the stress that comes along with it, do you have any tips for us to, um, uh, what we can do to stay in tune with our body? Most of the people that follow me, um, know that, or, or follow a healthy lifestyle and including myself, I, I, I am what probably my diet is very clean, mm -hmm. but I can still struggle with eating. And I know it's all emotion driven. I had a woman the other day, you know, come to me for help because she eats, she, she munches out on cashews when she's in front of the computer. Oh my I mean, gosh, I love cashews. <laughs> yes, yes. And I know that I can only, if I eat three, it's okay. But when I eat the whole container, yeah, no it doesn't not. matter whether cashews are okay for you or not. That many are not. I'm telling you, I've binged at Whole Foods. I mean, it's like you can, you can really, it's, it's, it is, it's between our ears, you know, and no matter how clean we get, when we lose control, you know, it feels bad. It just feels bad. Of course, binging on cashews, 
whole lot better than Doritos, whole lot better than haagen and yet it still causes shame and guilt and fear and, you know, a desire to do something quickly, like run five miles. I mean, it's like, it's the mental obsession that takes over, and a lot of people just live there, even though they're like, super clean, you know, or they're clean. And then when they're not, they're really not. And that creates its own shame and sense of an imposter syndrome, you know? And so it's just really important. Um, regarding the holidays, you know, obviously stress is the number one cause of, uh, of eating, you know, overeating and, and unhealthy eating. And, and when we get to that breaking point, it's like we need somehow to have like a, a pressure valve and food is often our pressure valve because we do chill out on the couch and we watch TV and that's like we get our, we get to decompress. And so it's just really important to know ahead of time that you can't do it all and don't try. Like we are not super women. Okay. Like, right. It's like give it up. Like we have limitations on our bodies, our health, our, our, you know, capacity to, to help others. I mean, there's a lot of things at play for women, especially where we just try to do it all. So before the, all the invitations start coming in, just know you don't have to say yes to everything, you know, you, and the best thing you can do is don't say yes right away. Don't, don't, RSVP right away, especially if somebody's putting on the spot in person, like, can you help out with this party? Or can you come, you know, can make, make crafts for this or whatever. Tell everybody, gee, I have to check my schedule. Let me get back to you. Like number one auto response is pause, put it on timeout and tell people you'll get back to them. And that way you, because we're so compulsory, like we're like, oh, sure. And then we're like, what did I do that for? Right? And right. that's how we get overcommitted. So just don't overcommit to anything. Don't commit to anything till you really checked in with yourself. Is this something I even want to do? I mean, so often, what's the saying? You know, we, we spend money we don't have to buy things we don't need to impress people we don't like. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, one of the tricks that I do too, because I know like as soon as you go to a party or someplace that has food, it's never unless it's a party with like a health nut, like the cook is the health nut right? Um, and the host. It, it, typical holiday parties have the sugar and, um, and, and when you eat sugar, you just want more sugar. Of um, course. So one of the things that I try to do is make sure I drink a shake or eat something healthy before I go so I'm not arriving hungry and even packing myself like a treat bar. I'm talking not like the super most uber healthy bar, but a bar that at least is better than the chocolate brownies on the table. Do you have any other types of advice for people? Like, especially the sugar cravings. I know a lot of people are like, how do I get rid of my sugar cravings? Well, I have something called the just one theory. And for some people, one, one is never enough and a thousand, you know, like one is too many and a thousand is never enough. So, you know, my experience is just one of something that you really are addicted to or tr that triggers you. It's better to eat none than some, okay? It's literally better to say no thank you than say I'll try one because one does lead to so many. So I'd say try to just say no to, uh, to all that stuff. And you're not deprived. I mean, if you consider uh, how good you're going to feel if you don't imbibe, it's like you're actually giving yourself a gift, not depriving yourself. And so it's a little shift in our perspective. But another thing I do, I mean, I'll eat, I'll sometimes eat before I go somewhere and just enjoy the company. You know, it's not about the food. And so the more I can get really into people and listening to people and asking questions and really engage, because what we really crave, I mean, we are hungry for connection, for connection and love and, and just like being a part of. And so, you know, and food is crazy enough. Food, it makes us feel like we're connected at first because like everybody's eating, but then if we go overboard, we feel very disconnected. We feel fat. We feel gross. We feel like, why did I do that? Our head is full of all these self-criminating, recriminating thoughts. So just know that getting involved with people is a great way to, to be more engaged and not have it be about the food. But one of the things I love doing, Trina, more than anything is helping out at parties. Like I get into action. <laughs> That's a good advice. That's really yeah. good advice. Clearing dishes. You know, what can I do? Just asking the host, what can I do to help out? Like just what can I do to help is like 
music to, to a host's ears. Like just think, because so often we're in our heads, like how do I look or, I, you know, I don't like what I wore or she's so much prettier, or, you know, oh, they all know each other and I don't. It's like our heads are so noisy with insecure thoughts. The moment you get into action, you're just like feeling useful and you're appreciated. You're more a part of, you know, and it's like that is helpful. And then my other suggestion, which nobody would expect is, you like go hang out with some kids if you're feeling especially bad. Like kids are awesome. They're so not self-conscious and, and they like just are having fun, you know? So sometimes when I'm really tortured by like, what am I doing here? And I wish I hadn't come. I just get involved with the kids and then I'm so happy and having a blast. So these are some different things you can do. Nothing to do with food, nothing to do with food, but everything to do with our emotions and the thoughts in our head that lead to overeating. And really quick, since you talked about kids, um, any advice to moms out there, you, you know, when they see their kids are eating emotionally and does it look different for kids? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to control your kid and what they eat. It's so hard, you know? And so I just, I really, um, you know, I don't teach people to try to control their kids because I know I had a controlling mom. I was a fat girl and my mom tried to control what I ate and guess what? It made me eat more and I don't blame her now. I used to hate her for it, but, but now I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> translate, but, um, but now I'm like, poor thing. Like she knew I was out of control. She knew I was like a sugar, like she knew I was a sugar addict, but she knew I was going for the sugar and she didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to, you know, help me. And I think that's great advice. Probably the best advice is to let them, you know, let them not to take it away. Obviously they're going to want more, but maybe have the conversation of better alternatives. Not now, yeah. Before it happens the next time. Totally. Before. So I yeah. think that's awesome. I try to do that with my kids. Um, we eat very healthy, but we do have snacks every once in a while. And, you know, I, one of the things I did is when I, when they were really little, I made the term not food so that whenever we had something that was not health related food, I made sure they understood this is not really food because food nourishes your body and has nutrients in it. And this cupcake is, should not be what you consider food for right. your body. It's a treat. It's not food. So one day we were at the grocery store and my daughter asked, you know, and we were checking out and my daughter said she wanted it was like a candy bar or something, you know how they have all that stuff. And I looked, stopped and looked at her. I go, no, Mia, that's not food. And she goes, oh, okay, mom. And then the person behind me was like, what, that was easy. What did you do? And I said, well, I triggered <laughs> in her brain that that's not nutritious. I've told her before that food is nutrients for your body and we eat healthy food. So that's not food. All I had to do was say not food. So she got that. Love that. That's great. I think that's really powerful. Yeah. And for kids, it's like you said, it's just different. It's just trying to educate them in a different way, but not, not taking away because you always want more. Yeah. And the thing is, is, is we got to, I mean, as hard it is, as it is to watch your kids do unhealthy things, you know, uh, you know, the best thing we can do is be a, a power of example, you know? So right. if, if a mom is an emotional eater, you know, just work on your own stuff and that will absolutely translate to your kids. You know, if not now, later and you know later on as they get older they'll remember the changes that mom made to get healthier yeah well i know you got to go and i have to run too so i just want to say thank you so much for joining us um and they can find you at heal your hunger we posted the link healyourhunger.com is there anything else that we need to let them know I, I would be happy to offer a free uh, breakthrough session for anybody who wants to dig into this a little bit more, feels like maybe they have some emotional attachment to food. I'm happy to give you a complimentary session and see you know, what we can do to strategize to help you get healthier. So um, there's a link there. It's healyourhunger.com forward slash apply. Yep, that's and the one we got. Great. So just go ahead and do that. It's a free session. Um, and I'd love to meet you and also love to help in any way I can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Trisha. And I can't wait to see you soon. Yeah, I can't wait. Thank All you right. so much. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to keep learning how to create your healthy self. See you next time.